straight to the assign line next. Camera two, can I have camera two next, please? Stand by on OS7. Coming to assign two. Can I have the OS for the studio, please? OK, everything's sounding good. Mixing to camera three. And presenters, presenters ready, please. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Cut, go bam, cue. for music students in Newham to battle it out for that top prize. The Year 9s were lucky enough to receive a talk from the BBC journalists to get an insight into the career of journalism. And STEM Club has been really busy with the Hydrogen Challenge to put their engineering skills to the test. Now let's have a look at how Pleasure did in the Hydrogen Challenge. The London Hydro Challenge is a programme that is sponsored by the Mayor of London in association with Arcola Energy and it is designed for Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4 pupils to create, build and test a hydrogen powered model car while learning about the environment. As part of this year's London School's Hydrogen Challenge, Pleasure STEM Club took part in a study that showed young people's knowledge and attitudes about hydrogen as a fuel. The winning student from Pleasure was Matilda. Now let's have a look at some footage from the Hydrogen Challenge. Uh, my name's Romana. Uh, and I'm Harlem. Uh, and we both work for Arcola Energy. Um, and we take this workshop into various schools around London. Um, but we think it's really important uh, to think about the future and um, the resources we have. It's also really fun. Um, what impact do you hope to achieve with uh, the Hydrogen Challenge? Well, we mostly just want to educate people um, about hydrogen as a fuel uh, and about how we get hydrogen and how we can use it. Um, and we just want to get young people interested in engineering and sciences because there's quite a, quite a shortage of people going into this kind of thing. So what advice would you give to students who are um, not going to engineering? Um, well, I would say work very hard, um, but of course the main thing is just to have um, an active curiosity, I would say. Um, it's a very good idea to study maths and chemistry and physics, but at the same time, I mean, for instance, I didn't study any of those subjects to A-level, but just having a general um, kind of interest in technology and sciences is, can be enough just to kind of get you to where you want to be, as long as you're passionate enough about it. And finally, what do you like most about your job? Um, well, of course, playing with Lego is uh, fantastic. Uh, yeah, it's just really good to go to those different schools where I'm going to work with those different people, the young people, and get them here.
This is BBC School Report. Back to you in the studio. Hi, my name is Iram and I'm Tashit's current affairs correspondent. Today, on Friday the 7th of March, Year 9 students will receive a talk from two BBC journalists, Rajan Datta and Famida. Tashit's STEM Club will have the opportunity to interview them and then see what a career in journalism will be like. The event will begin here shortly. But what I'm here to do today is to talk to you about the media, the BBC, and why it needs you as much as maybe some of you want to work there. And I'll explain more about that a bit later on. Um, what I do is I am a reporter stroke presenter. Um, I've done lots of things in my time. I've been uh, a writer for newspapers and magazines. I've worked in radio. I've worked in quite a few programmes across TV. And um, I'm also introduced to Farah, who is what's called a production trainee. Yeah. Yep. And um, I think she probably is closer, if you like, to what you might maybe one day uh, in terms of age for a start off, uh, but also I think she, yeah, uh, and gender, and, yes. <laughs> and uh, she will be able to answer your questions. And I'm, a bit later on, I'm going to, with your help, interview her about what she does, just to show, in a sense, what it's like working on the media. We just want to thank you first for your talk, it was really good and I think most, well, all the students really enjoyed it. So um, we've just got a few questions to ask about the tour about the journalism industry, so I'll hand you over to one of our reporters. Um, we heard you in assembly today talking about a pitch meeting which you have in the morning. We just wanted to know, is, is journalism a 24-7 matter which you, you have to keep your eyes and ears open so you can talk about it in the morning? I would say that it is. Um, I think that you're always, I mean, on, on my way here, I was listening to the radio in the morning. I might check my apps that are kind of news apps that tell me what's going on in the world. It's not just a nine to five job where you're only working when you're at work. It's not necessarily a bad thing because I'd, even if I wasn't in the media, I'd probably listen to the news, watch the news. So it's just about being aware of what goes on. That doing outside activities from apart from journalism helped, like, urged you on to do more within the business. Like, say, when you went travelling around the world and you yeah. saw people do different statements. Well, on the, on the one hand, it definitely gives you a different perspective, and it's really good. Um, I spent a year actually away from the BBC, just being with this band going around the world, and um, it was so refreshing not to be around journalists for start off because they can get a little bit oppressive just being in that world. I'm sure I mean I'm sure Sean will agree with that. Um, and you know, there is a limit to that. So on that level, yes. The other thing is, yeah, going out and talking to people with, with no kind of agenda is um, it's really important to recognise it is a competitive place to be, but uh, hold yourself true to your values so that the competition doesn't get negative. Um, it can be constructive, it can make you at the top of your game, it can make you feel like, you know what, I didn't get it, uh, I need to be faster next time, or I need to research it quicker, or I need to be more thorough in my research. Um, so, kind of studying a bit more um, at university and maybe then teaching university students. Um, I toyed with the idea of doing that as well, uh, and then I got bored of being in libraries and, and, and college. And I thought, that was an incredibly interesting talk from two BBC journalists themselves. I am sure that everyone was as inspired as I was. This is Neelam reporting from BBC School Report. Hi, my name is Amina. And my name is Zero. And we are Fashion's entertainment correspondents. On Wednesday, the 12th of February, the music department organised and hosted the second Battle of Bands competition for secondary schools in Newham. The competition has grown since the previous year, with seven other Newham schools competing. This includes Rokeby, Stratford, Brampton Manor, Lister, Sarah Brunel, St Angela's and Langton. 
Three bands from Clasher were entered into the battle after surviving the pre-competition trials when numerous internal bands competed. The Troublemakers, a Year 9 band, the Unknowns from Year 11 and Crescent Trap from Year 10 all managed to make it through. The judges were blown away by their performance and commented on the Troublemakers' natural stage presence as well as the harmonies in the Crescent Trap's rendition of Camping Stars. But it was the Unknowns' version of Happy that made it happen for Clasher. Now let's take a look at some footage from the Battle of the Bands. Two categories, best original song and best cover. We have a range of age groups this year, and the judges have been told to consider this when they're making their final decisions. Let's find out what they're looking for. Okay. I got a feeling. Lessons. But uh, what I'm looking for today is a band who are together, who are enjoying their performance. And I sing in a band myself, and our band is really big on harmony. So I'm going to be looking for some harmonious singing tonight. Hello, I'm not going to sing for you. My name's Cara, I'm a drummer, uh, and I'm a drum teacher and a violin teacher. And what would I be looking for? A good rhythm section. That's what I'd be looking for. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> okay, my name's Judith. I'm Head of Education for New Music Trust. And I'm looking for bands that have got a real energy, that have got a real passion about what they do. And I have to say that myself and my colleague, Phil, we're also looking for some bands who might, we might give the opportunity to, to perform at Stratford Circus. <laughs> I'm Chief Executive of New Music Trust and uh, New Music Hub. I'm here as the uh, music industry legend. Uh, 25 years in the music industry, I'm looking for the money. How are we going to sell these bands? You know, where are they going to be in the charts? How marketable are they? And I'm going to keep it real tonight. So I hope I, hope I don't get any booze. Okay. All right, Brian did. So we've got Brian in for the best uh, original song and the best cover song. We've got some medals for you and we've got certificates, but we've also got some extra special prizes, which I'm just finding out what they are right now. Um, first one is a recording session um, and a live streaming session as well via the internet for the London-wide Battle of the Bands competition. That's for people who have written their own song. Um, and then the other winner is... Oh yes. And then there are three slots at Stratford Circus for people doing arrangements of covers. Is that right? Okay, anything. All right, so, girls and boys, we've got a lot to get through today. Loads, in fact. So, have fun, cheer. But if you could not cheer every five seconds, that would be amazing. Thanks. and we are very lucky to have them back. Please welcome St. Angela's Band. St. Angela's Band, the winners of Best Cover Song, who are now in Year 12, started the evening off with Teenage Dirtbag. The judges thought they really set the tone as their harmonies were tight and they performed with energy and charisma. Members of the audience described the atmosphere in the hall as incredible.
In The Unknowns, Piniel, the lead singer of the band, gave a confident and sassy performance and really engaged with the crowd. Armin and Tara sang backing vocals in perfect harmony while Safia, Zainab and Sonal rocked out on bass, drums and piano. They were runners-up into the best cover song category and lost out to Sarah Bernal's band who performed Let Her Go by Passenger. The band won the chance to go to the University of East London's recording studio to record their very own EP. What's the name of your band? Okay, so you're here at Battle of the Bands 2014. How do you feel? Very excited. I like. Okay. All the bands are really good. Right. Very right. So, are there any bands in particular that you are supporting today? Yeah. Um, Sarah Bennell. I don't know. I don't know any of them, but I had a little bit of Wide battle via a live streaming event. This is Ashwini reporting for BBC School. Thank you for watching our BBC School report. Hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed filming it. And see you next year! Woo!